Okay, so I came across a cool phenomenon that I'll share with you. Uh, it was shown to me by Professor Robert Baldo. And it's really just the, the sound a slinky makes. Now, the sound a slinky makes not that impressive if you're not listening carefully. But if we can amplify that sound, just a cardboard box here, um, what we'll do with that is we'll hook the slinky up like so to the cardboard box so that the slinky, when it vibrates, it'll force the cardboard box to vibrate the same way. And then that same tap Sounds very cool. So I thought, okay, a cool sound. Well, why does it make that cool sound? Because I like to think about hows and whys of everything. So then, you know, I thought of what I knew about um, natural frequencies of objects and how they vibrate. For example, what you have here is um, metal pipe cut to different lengths, and we know that if you have a longer length object, it will vibrate to a frequency that is slower, just like a pendulum. If it's a longer pendulum, it has a lower frequency, and if we want it to go faster, we will just make a shorter pendulum. Same thing with natural frequencies of um, most objects. So our ears interpret that as pitch. So why then doesn't the slinky have a pitch that is sort of a pure tone, not exactly pure, but like one of these metals, you hit it and it sounds like one note. But the sound that you heard from the slinky was a little more complex. So why do we get that complex sound? Well, it turns out, I was driving home and I was doing some thinking. Um, the energy that we send when we transmit um, a pulse through the slinky, the energy doesn't go just in one path, but it takes infinitely many paths. And starting with, you've got an inside layer, an inside track, and then you've got an outside track where you'd have to go all the way around. Now, I, I relate that to track and field to help understand. In track and field, if you go around a curve, you want to take the inside lane because the inside lane travels less distance than the outside lane would take. So if something's taking less distance, it's actually a shorter sheet of metal. Kind of like we had shorter pieces of metal and we have higher pitch than the lower pieces of metal. So in your slinky, the very first um, track that uh, a, a pulse of energy would finish from would be the, the inside track. But the, the outside track, if you send energy and it travels the long way, it's going to finish last. So we're going to have a wave that goes on the inside track and it has some natural mode of vibration for that first ring. And then every subsequent ring afterwards is going to have some other wavelength, some other mode of vibration. And then lastly, the very last wave we hear would be the energy that traveled on the very outer edge. And the very outer edge sounded different because it's a a longer path that it was taken, so it's a bigger piece of metal. So let's go back to that sound again. So if my prediction and my, I guess, reasoning is correct, the path from the inside of the loop is going to finish first, and that's a shorter length of metal, should have a higher pitch than the sound that travels the longer path and finish less, that would be a lower pitch. So you should hear a sound that gradually starts from a higher pitch and gets to a lower pitch, instead of staying the same pitch. So what I think you'll get if you graph the 
intensity versus time is you'll get a higher frequency at the beginning which gradually tapers off to a lower frequency to account for the the path taken on the inside track versus the outside track.